All right, so now that we've talked about how how the diabetes are different, type one versus type two, let's talk a little bit about how treating them is approached, okay? So for type one, the beta cells are gone. You're not making enough insulin to sustain life, so what do you need? You need insulin, right? So uh, that is why it's called insulin dependent. And you take exogenous insulin, you can do that through injections, you can do that through an insulin pump. Um, but beyond that, I mean, you're, you're on insulin, you're monitoring your carbs, your sugar intake so that you can give yourself an appropriate amount of insulin um, to balance your blood sugar. There really aren't any more changes beyond that um, that are offered by, uh, by the health system, right? I remember when I was diagnosed in 2001, we asked, my family asked, is there any changes needed to, make, needed to be made to the diet? Um, you know, what can he eat, what can he eat? And they didn't really say anything. There wasn't like, no, he could just keep, keep eating what he was. And I'm, I'm arguing that it's because of the uncertain nature of how it came about. Um, at the time, it was largely accepted that it was just genetic, right? There was nothing I could have done. It's in the genes, tough noogies, you know, just keep going, living your life. And so if you don't know what caused it, you can't really give a definitive answer as to what needs to be changed to address what caused it because you don't know, right? So it was just like, man, that's what it is. Looks like it's genetic and you're just gonna be on insulin, okay? So in terms of treatment, that's relatively simple. Right, not necessarily easy as most type one diabetics know, but um, you're on insulin as a type one diabetic. Type twos, it gets a little bit broader in terms of your options on how to treat it. So, like we mentioned before, it's all about inflammation. The inflammation that is causing our loss of insulin sensitivity, our increase in insulin resistance, something is happening that is altering the proteins that are accepting that insulin and making use of the sugar in your blood, right? So obviously you want to address that inflammation. Why is that affecting or, or what, what is bringing about the inflammation that is affecting the receptors of the insulin, right? So are you, I mean, there's just so many ways that you could do that. Are you going to improve the receptors or boost the insulin receptors so that you have more receptors with a greater chance of them being healthy to take the insulin in? Are you going to decrease inflammation through diet and exercise? That seems, that's what I would argue is the most efficient and the most accessible and affordable for most people. Um, there's a lot of ambiguity in the nutrition, dietetics, and um, pharmaceutical world as to, you know, what is an anti-inflammatory inflammatory diet. There's, there's a lot of conflicting information in terms of what you're supposed to eat, not eat. And um, so again, this, what I would argue is the most important seems to fall on the back burner because no one can, can, can really come up with a solid answer as to what to do. And so we resort to medication, right? So a lot of that medication is for focusing, um, like I said, either on boosting the receptors to the insulin or decreasing the activity of ALK cells in the pancreas. So the pancreas, um, as I mentioned, has many different kinds of cells. The beta cells are responsible for insulin alpha cells are responsible for making glucagon. Glucagon is the protein that interacts with the liver to increase the release of glycogen, which is stored glucose into the blood. Now, in a healthy human, you've got alpha cells and beta cells in this constant flux of um, maintaining blood sugar, right? So um, if your blood sugar gets too low, Alpha cells make glucagon to release glycogen into the blood and boost your sugars up. If you get too high, it releases insulin to bring it back down. Now, 
your body is always in motion. Even if you're not moving, your cells are always using energy. So there is a steady drip from both alpha cells and beta cells that are maintaining your blood sugar levels. Now, when the beta cells go, those alpha cells are still working, right? So um, part of what is elevating your blood sugar on a constant basis for both type one and type two is the fact that your alpha cells are still making glucagon, still releasing glycogen from the liver. So part of what makes the medications in diabetes, when you look at um, the most popular, metformin, uh, ozempic, trulicity, all of those, those are all GLP-1 agonists or glucagon-like protein agonists. So they are desensitizing your body essentially to glucagon. So it's preventing your liver from releasing glycogen, right? So it steadies um, that kind of baseline release of your blood sugar elevating hormone glucagon, okay? So again, you've got a lot of different things to focus on as a type two. Is it insulin sensitivity, like addressing the actual insulin itself and its receptors? Are you addressing the complementary or supplementary cells and hormones like glucagon to desensitize you to the things that are working against insulin? Are you addressing inflammation directly by taking antioxidants and you know all of the kind of things that soothe bodily inflammation to prevent the further deterioration of your insulin binding sites. Just a lot, to, a lot to, uh, a lot to address, and it it essentially uncovers the uncertain nature of type two in general, right? Because it begs the question, and type one, I'll, I'll talk about why type ones need to pay attention to this, but it begs the question now: is Type 2 diabetes just insulin sensitivity and just insulin resistance? Could it be that the beta cells of type 2 diabetics are also losing mass? Right? Because that's something that no one seems to talk about a whole lot is that beta cell mass question, right? We know that type 1s have lost their beta cell mass, right? They just simply do not make enough insulin. Type twos, because there is a normal level of circulating insulin, it is assumed that the beta cells are intact and there's no, there's no change. It's just that there's something going on with the receptors, right? There's something downstream of the beta cells themselves. What I'm posing is that Type 2 diabetics are, in fact, losing beta cells. And it's affecting the release of insulin from the unaffected or the, the left beta cells that are still there that have not been killed off. And, and I'll get to an illustration on that in just a little bit. But is type 2 diabetes just a matter of inflammation? causing insulin resistance or is it they see the same kind of inflammation that led to the death of the beta cells for type 1 could the, ins the 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 loss of insulin sensitivity be a checkpoint on the way to the the complete loss of beta cell mass that type 1s exhibit so this opens up a new door of exploration because if that is the case and you kind of look at this as a spectrum of diabetes, right? Where on one hand you have complete health, on the other you have type one diabetes where you've lost everything and you have no insulin. Type two is kind of this progressive loss of beta cells. And you know, if, if that inflammation continues, that you'll get to a point where you have no beta cells and not enough insulin. Now, again, you look at, visually, you look at a type one and you type two, 
and I can already I can already tell you've got a picture in your head. Like it's very difficult to be overweight and a type one diabetic. Not impossible, but type one is itself a disease of wasting away. Right? Everyone who is type one remembers being very skinny and losing weight and you know drinking a lot, peeing a lot, always thirsty, always kind of like tired and like I said, wasting away. Whereas type twos, if you like stereotype a type two diabetic, they're obese. They overeat, they under exercise, they eat, you know, their diet is trash and they don't move at all, right? So those are two very different animals. So it's very difficult for people to see one as a checkpoint on the way to the other. And we'll go into why, why that is or why I see it that way.